welcome back to Creative Peckeeping. In today's video, we are going to focus on a fish that is not super popular in the hobby, but I feel like it should be. And that is a lovely little shell dweller called Neolamprologus brevis, or more specifically, the brevis sunspot. I keep mine in a 20 gallon tall, which at the moment is a species only tank for the purposes of breeding. So my setup will be a little different than what you would do at your normal home aquarium, but these fish can be kept with other more peaceful Lake Tanganyikan fish. And overall, they get along with other fish fairly well. They tend to stay on the bottom and like to breed in their little shells. In this case, you don't really have to add plants if you don't want to, but I have some jungle val, corkscrew val, and some moss as a great little hiding spot for the little fry. As once again, the main purpose is to breed these fish. So the way I set this up is I wanted to make something really simple for a couple fish to pair up, be able to spawn, so I can kind of make more little Neolamprologus babies and spread them around the hobby, as well as BAP them for breeding points in my local fish club. If you would like to keep them long term, I recommend a 40 gallon breeder in terms of tank size. That will give them more space, but also give you a little bit more flexibility to add uh, some other fish to the tank as well. In terms of how they look, they're very interesting. So in the back, you can see another pair that are showing little breeding stripes. So they will be able to turn these breeding stripes on and off. And they also have a beautiful, lovely golden tummy. And if you look under their eyes, they have this beautiful beautiful purple pink sheen under their eyes which doesn't always get captured by a camera and it usually only really shows up when you are up close to your tank so it's not something you'll see from far away but from a distance you'll be able to observe it so they are ever-changing fish who are quite lovely to look at and on top of that they have a little squishy face a little bulldog squishy face so they look surprised all the time when they look at you always surprised if you are interested in breeding them or just being able to observe their natural behavior, I recommend getting some shells for them. These are larger shells that I picked up at one of the GCCA swap meets. These are events that are put on by my local fish club, which is kind of like the farmer's market but of fish stuff and fish supplies and other fish. Now they have to be large enough for both the male and the female to fit inside because they will both go into the shell. For comparison, these are the little tiny shells that I use for my ocelotas and my other smaller shell dwellers. So you definitely have to choose the shell that would be the appropriate size for them. When it comes to telling the different genders apart in these fish, it's actually not too difficult, which is always nice. It's never a fun time when you're staring at your fish and trying to figure out, are you a boy? Are you a girl? I don't know. Everybody looks the same. So the male is, of course, much, much bigger and has a more boxy kind of rectangular body, as well as a small hump on his head, which makes him, you know, extra big and extra fancy. He is large because he has to protect the female as he stays with her and she will be in the shell. And she has to be smaller than him because she has to fit into the shell first and he can follow her behind her. Her body is a lot more streamlined. She does not have the hump. She's much smaller. And usually the yellow will be much more pronounced on her body. So this way you'll be able to tell the pair behind. You can see the female and the big male in the bottom. And as well as with the pair in the front, you see the big male and the female. Email. Feeding these fish is pretty easy because they are omnivores. They would in the wild feed on a lot of plankton, but they like frozen bloodworms, brine shrimp, and protein cichlid pellets that are small, and they do need just a little bit of vegetable matter in their diets as well. Overall, these fish are really lovely and filled with personalities. Their squishy faces are hilarious, their expressions are hilarious, and if you have not tried them and would like to try shell dwellers, I really recommend these fish, especially if you want to try a larger shell dweller because these are much bigger than the multis I've shown you in the past as well as the gold ocelotas. They're big, they're nice, but they're not super mean, which I really, really like, and they don't try to murder you when you stick your hand in the tank like with the ocelotas. So that's also a bonus. So I hope that you enjoyed this short little species spotlight. Hopefully I got you interested in these adorable, adorable fish. If you think they are cute and would like to keep them or know other fish keepers that might be interested, be sure to share this video with them so that way they know they exist and maybe we'll get them and maybe they'll be more popular in the hobby. 
that would be really, really cool. So thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you in the next video.